Welcome back to the channel, guys. This video is going to be a complete setup guide for Streamlabs Desktop. If you want to download Streamlabs Desktop for free, click the link in the description and download it and open it up so you can follow along. So let's go ahead and get started. So I want to keep this guide pretty short and sweet, but also cover as many things as I can and keep it simple with the best settings for most people. Now keep in mind, everything that I talk about in this video can vary depending on what computer you have and what you're trying to stream and what your equipment you have and all of that type of thing. But I'm gonna give you the best streaming settings and how to set it up. And then I'm also gonna give you the best settings for recording, recording and how you can set that up. So let's go ahead and get started here. First thing we're gonna do is click the options wheel down on the bottom left. Here we're gonna start off on the stream tab. This is where you're gonna see stream type uh, streaming services, and then you are going to want to select whatever service you're wanting to stream to, if that's what you're trying to do. Um, in this case, it's gonna have Twitch automatically uh, preset as a default, and the server is gonna be automatic. That's what you wanna leave it on. And the stream key is something that's gonna be from Twitch that you do not wanna share, or YouTube or whatever service you're using. If you don't wanna share this, this is how you stream to your channel. That's about it for setting up uh, where you're streaming to, it's just under the stream tab. Moving on to output, get into more of the nitty gritty here just a little bit, but I'll make it quick and simple. So initially the output mode is gonna be on simple, and honestly this isn't bad if you wanna just set it up through here, but I recommend just going to advanced uh, just so you can set up everything 100% uh, properly. So you're really not gonna touch anything for this tutorial other than the encoder. If you have an NVIDIA encoder, you want to, or NVIDIA graphics card rather, excuse me, you want to use the NVENC new encoder here. Um, you can leave this checked for N4 streaming service encoder. It doesn't really matter. Again, I'm not going to cover everything in detail and explain everything, but I'll try to cover uh, the important stuff uh, and the things you want to change. So uh, you can leave that checked. Rate control, you want this on CBR. This is constant bit rate. Um, and this is also, again, under the streaming tab. We'll talk about recording later, which is different. But for live streaming, you want rate control on CBR. Use a bit rate of 6,000 as long as you have pretty good internet. E-frame interval, you can leave on zero, which will automatically set it for you, depending on where you're streaming to, so you don't have to worry about it. And preset, max quality, profile high, look head off, and you can see the rest. These are all default values. That's it for setting up the streaming um, output section. Moving on to the recording tab, all you want to do is click recording right here. Um, first thing you're going to have is your recording path. If you don't know where your videos are being saved to, or you want to set a custom folder that you can always easily find whenever you do create or record videos, um, you can set that right here by clicking browse and selecting whatever you want. Um, and then recording format, you're probably just going to want to use MP4. Um, this is going to be just the easiest to record and edit and everything start to finish. You can upload it right to YouTube if you want. Um, so it's definitely going to be, you know, the most common option here. You've probably heard of MP4 audio track. You don't need to mess with this. We're just going to be working with one track, uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, recording. You definitely want to use the NVENC new encoder again here. It's just the best encoder, uh, generally speaking for performance, especially if you're trying to live stream or record games at the same time, because it's a dedicated chip on your graphics card. Um, so it doesn't impact the performance of your game too much. Um, everything else you don't need to touch except for rate control. Instead of CBR, you want to set this to CQP. Um, and I recommend a CQ level of 17. That's been the sweet spot for me where I get really good, uh, perfect quality, but I do not have any performance issues. Um, but you can adjust this if need be. Uh, again, keyframe interval on zero, max uh, preset on max quality, and everything else the same as far as these go, which are default values. Now under output, we're just gonna go to the audio section. Here, you don't really need to do anything. I never mess with this, so you can ignore that. Replay buffer is something I'll probably make a video on soon. Um, you can enable this if you do want to be able to save recordings while live streaming, but it's a little bit more advanced, so I'll make a video about that later, but you don't need to worry about it as a beginner at all. Just leave it off. Moving on to the audio tab here. This is where you can set up some of your audio if you don't already have it set up. So for instance, your desktop audio device one is probably going to be on default. Um, this will just capture any default audio coming through whatever your main desktop audio is. So anything you're hearing through your headphones or over your speakers, it's going to come through this track here, which if you see on the bottom right here by the audio mixer, you have a track for desktop audio where you can control the volume and things like that and also mute it. Um, and you can set up two of those if you'd like, and you can set it custom if you would like to select a certain speaker or something like that. Um, so if it's not working, that's where you can change it. 
Uh, same thing with the microphone here, the mic slash auxiliary device. It should default to your microphone, um, maybe by default, but if you notice your microphone's not working, you can make sure to come in here and manually set it. Uh, mine is called this right here because I have a Scarlett Solo. Um, so I'm gonna click that right there. So you wanna make sure your microphone's on the proper one. And just set it to the device one. And that's really it for audio setup. You don't need to mess with anything up here. Next, we're gonna go to the video tab. Now this is another pretty important one, but also I'll keep it really simple. It's not too hard. Your base canvas resolution is going to be your monitor's resolution. So for most people, it's probably 1920 by 1080, unless you have a two or 4K monitor, then it'll be that. Your output scaled resolution is going to be what the final product is. So this is gonna be what your live stream is live streamed at or what your recording is recorded at. I recommend just keeping it at 1920 by 1080. Unless you're trying to stream in 720 or something, then this is the one you're gonna to wanna to change down to 720 or whatever lower resolution you're trying to stream at. Um, but once you have that set, downscale filter, you can just leave this on by cubic. I don't find it these settings that make too much of a difference. I just leave it on the default. Um, and then you can leave this FPS on common FPS values, but you are gonna wanna change this FPS value to 60 frames per second if you were streaming video games in particular. If you're doing some other type of content that's not really high frame rate video games, you can definitely do 30, or if you don't have that good of internet, um, 30 can help lower your bit rate need as well. But I'm gonna recommend 1080 60 for most streams these days. We're gonna go ahead and skip hotkeys. That's more advanced stuff you can set up if you would like to just select some hotkeys, like a mute button or something like that on your keyboard. You can do that here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go to the advanced section. Now, I recommend putting the process priority on above normal. This will just make sure Streamlabs has plenty of resources to not cause any stuttering or performance issues. And then other than that, you don't really need to do anything else here. But if you do have problems with your stream in specific, um, as far as like dropping frames and things like that, you might wanna come down here and click dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. This basically means instead of dropping frames where your live stream will tend to skip entire frames and, and sections, it'll actually just change your bitrate and lower it so that the quality will drop maybe significantly, but you at least will still have something uh, going on the live stream and it won't completely cut out and lose frames entirely. You can also mess around with these two settings, the low latency mode and the enable new network uh, code. If you are having some type of issues with your live stream uh, and internet, they can probably help with some stuff like that, but you don't really need to turn those on unless you are having issues. So just leave them, leave all these on default. And that's really it for the settings. So we're gonna go ahead and click done. Now scenes are just individual scenes which are made up of sources. So we're gonna go ahead and make our first scene here. Um, so basically all you wanna do is add a source. As you can see, Streamlabs has plenty of sources to choose from. In this case, let's just say we're gonna be streaming a game. We would select a game capture, click add source. You can name it whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna leave it the default add source, and then you can leave this on automatic and it'll automatically select whichever game you have open at the time, which can be really convenient. You can also do capture specific window and then select a specific window um, of the game that you have open that you want to stream uh, or record, but we're just gonna leave this on auto, auto for the time being, and you can also control if you want your cursor showing. Um, but other than that, you wanna leave everything the same. The only one here, like I said, you might wanna change is capture cursor. You probably want it on though, so people can see your cursor in most cases. We're gonna go ahead and close that. And now imagine we have a game up here. Um, you're really set to go. If this is all you want, you can click record down here. Um, and if you do have a stream connected, you should have a go live button down here as well. Now, if you need to set up a webcam or something like that, you can go ahead and click uh, the plus by the source here. And you can go ahead and add a Video capture device it's up here on the essential sources section. Click add source, you can name it webcam, whatever you like. Add source, and then you can see this is gonna be my webcam that I don't currently have on. Um, but if this was my webcam that was on, it would be just like that, and I can adjust how I want here. Um, and also, you know, add filters and things like that. Also, if you notice you added your webcam, for instance, and you already added your game and you can't see your webcam, but you know it's enabled and it's not invisible like this, um, be sure that you didn't put it behind or below your game because that'll make make it behind in the scene You want it at the very top kind of on top of everything if you think of it that way um, So that's just a quick tip as far as the audio settings go I'm gonna recommend you probably turn your game or desktop audio down a little bit so that your microphone is more clearly heard and your game's not too over Overbearing with the volume. I recommend going like down like minus six minus five something like that uh, depends on the game 
uh, we can test that out yourself. Uh, for the microphone, I'm gonna highly recommend you come in here and add filters and click edit filters. And you're probably gonna wanna add a noise suppression uh, add this. I recommend just putting the RN noise one on and you're good to go. This will help cut out any background noise. We're going to add another filter here. You can just add a compressor. This will help keep it from peaking. Again, you can just leave this on default values. No need to, to mess with these too much, if at all. And then the final thing is going to be the noise gate. This will make it to where your microphone isn't picking up. You know, if you're drinking a bottle of water or just moving around in your chair, it'll only, um, start recording through your mic and then shut off automatically you know whenever there's enough volume of noise coming through the microphone um so you can mess with this threshold it might depend on what microphone you have you might need to actually play with the close and open threshold um, but just play around with it and you'll eventually find uh, the settings that work good for you so it doesn't cut off your words and that's pretty much it for the microphone audio settings with the filters that's pretty much it for the basics of setting up streamlabs desktop um the last thing is if you don't want to go into the stream and enter your stream key here you can actually easily log in to streaming services right here by clicking that bottom left uh, login icon and then you can actually just select twitch or youtube or wherever you're trying to stream to and just log straight in and be streaming right there and the chat will come up and all that good stuff hopefully this video helped i tried to keep it simple and straight to the point thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time